This is the first in a series of physics videos about the energy topic, looking at energy stores and pathways or transfers. I teach AQA GCSE physics, but this should still be helpful for other exam boards or if you're learning about energy as part of Key Stage 3. By the end of this video, you should be able to name eight energy stores and identify some examples of each, recall what is meant by conservation of energy, and describe the energy transfers in a system. Energy is one of the hardest concepts to define in physics because it's a very abstract concept. We can't touch energy and we can't measure it directly, but we can use energy calculations to predict how or whether an object will move or whether a scenario is possible in real life. Because it's so hard to define, the exam boards don't actually give you a definition to memorise, but you can think of energy as the ability to do work on an object. It's measured in joules, and it's important that the shorthand for joules is a capital J, because a lowercase j actually means something different. I'd recommend putting a hat on your J, even if you don't usually write it like this, so the examiner definitely knows that it's a capital. Energy can be stored within objects, and we now recognise eight different ways that it can be stored. If you have an older revision guide, maybe one you've inherited from an older sibling, then you might see a list of 10 energy types, but this isn't a system that we use anymore, and it's not what's going to get you credit in GCSEs anymore. So the eight different stores that you need to know are these. Foods, fuels and chemical cells store energy chemically. Hot objects store energy thermally as a mixture of kinetic and potential energy. Kinetic energy is what we call the store that's found in moving objects. Objects that can elastically deform like elastic bands and springs and hair ties store elastic potential energy while they are deformed. Objects that have been lifted up store gravitational potential energy. Magnetic objects that are either in or near a magnetic field store energy magnetically. The nucleus of atoms, particularly radioactive metals like uranium and plutonium, are a store of nuclear energy. And finally, when you place two charged objects like a balloon you rubbed on your hair near to each other, they store energy electrostatically. Lightning occurs when electrostatically charged particles discharge. Did that make sense? Pause the video and see if you can write down what type of energy store each of these four objects is. The spring is an example of an elastic potential store because it's able to deform and then resume its original shape. Apples are a food, so they're a store of chemical energy. The paperclip holder is working with magnets, so of course it's a magnetic store. And then the birds that are flying in the air are a store of kinetic energy because they're moving, but also because they're raised up, they have gravitational potential energy too. Now, our next definition for the energy topic includes the phrase in a closed system. So let's briefly discuss what this means, as closed systems are important for explaining energy and momentum and even why chemical symbol equations balance. A system is a group of objects that we're choosing to analyse together. It could be as simple as a cardboard box and the objects inside of it, or as complex as a whole planet. Now, I've got two systems here. On the left is an open system and on the right is a closed system. If a system is described as open, that means that while I'm studying it, things could get in or out, and that could be matter or it could be energy. Imagine I was a biologist studying the wildlife in a garden, but the birds are still free to fly in and out, and hedgehogs can come under the fence. That's an open system. If a system is closed, like the system on the right, then while I'm studying it, nothing can get in or out. Objects can still move around, but they can't leave. Closed systems are important because within a closed system, the total amount of energy can't change. So if I know how much energy there is at the start, I know how much energy there will be at the end. And this is because of something called the conservation of energy, which means that energy cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed. It can only be transferred between different stores. At the start of my analysis, I give the Newton's cradle gravitational potential energy by lifting a ball. This is mainly converted to kinetic energy, although there's also some energy wasted as thermal energy. The balls are going to warm up ever so slightly each time that they impact. Wasted energy cannot be usefully used and it dissipates. Gradually, the useful energy gets less and less as it's all converted to thermal energy, until eventually my Newton's cradle will stop moving completely. Now we said that the energy can be transferred between stores, so it can be changed from one type of store to a different type of store. And there are four different ways you need to know that that transfer can happen. We can transfer energy by heating, mechanically, or by moving, so involving forces, electrically, and also by radiation, which includes sound and light. 
In an exam question such as this one, you might be asked to describe the transfers between energy stores. So you need to identify what the stores are at the start and the end, and then identify which of those four methods of transfer is happening. Here you would identify that the initial store at the start is the chemical store of energy in the fuel. Then as this chemical store is combusted, this is transferred by heating to both the cold water and the cold air, and they're heated and become a thermal store. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you found this a useful introduction to the energy topic. If you did find it useful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if there are other topics you'd like me to cover, don't forget to let me know in the comments below.